everything started when people try to run Kubernetes in Dagger, right? Like that's the nemesis of any, any uh, container platform, which is uh, trying to run Docker in Docker, Kubernetes in Docker and all that. Um, I think this is the original issue. Uh, yeah, so this one. So um, in order to make Dagger work in Kubernetes, uh, sorry, Kubernetes work, work in Dagger, it's not straightforward, right? Because uh, you need to run privileged uh, pipelines and uh, yeah, basically you need to mount things on, on particular places and then you, you, you need to try to um, create the, the proper types, Dagger types, so it is easy, easy to use. So basically, uh, this issue started like a while back ago, as you can see, like a year ago, and then several people uh, starting doing several approaches, uh, and then I spent some time polishing that. I actually got to like a quite nice solution. This is, by the way, this is like um, created for Dagger 09, I believe, like pre-modules, right? So as you can see here, it's like a, an example of a pipeline that starts a Kubernetes cluster, and then you can do whatever whatever you want with that. But we are using modules now, right? So we are in the uh, era of modules. So when I went to Daggerverse a while back ago and I tried searching for uh, K3S or Kubernetes in general, then uh, let me try to refresh. And I don't know if Daggerverse is either down or my internet is not helping for whatever reason. Okay. Okay, um, so I couldn't find any K3S uh, modules. And if I search for Kubernetes, as you can see, uh, Kubernetes, uh, there are like a lot of things around the Kubernetes ecosystem. As you can see, Helm, QCTL, Customize, Vault, etc. But no simple way to spin up a Kubernetes cluster to run whatever you want with that. So you could use it for local testing, right? So you want to play with the Kubernetes cluster like you, you can similarly do, similarly do with a kind, for example, or like Minikube or something else, that that's an option. Or uh, you might want to run like a more complex scenario, like a CI CD pipeline. And what people generally do today is like they wrap these tools like Minikube and kind and all that in, a, in either in GitHub Actions or in a script. And then they have to do a lot of crazy, you know, handling of like states, and is this done and move the configuration from one place to the other one to make sure that everything works the same way. Uh, so in order to improve this, I uh, took the, uh, the time and created a K3S um, Dagger module that allows you to run a Kubernetes cluster that can be accessed both locally and within your pipelines, right? Uh, so if we see this module, you can see that uh, it basically gives me these functions, right? So it basically gives me the underlying container of the of the server. I can actually start the server, like a Kubernetes server, and then this is going to return a service type. So I can use this to like either uh, run it through the CLI or maybe inject it as a, as a dependency of a, of a different, different service. Uh, I can like extend this uh, with, a, with a with container uh, function. I could fetch the config of the cluster, and then I could uh, additionally run QCTL with the cluster that I've just created, right? So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to show you uh, the code a little bit first, and then we are going to call some functions. So I have the module here on the left pane, and then I can do, on the right pane, I can do uh, Dagger, Dagger functions. And you're going to basically see the same functions that you saw on Daggerverse, right? Uh, config, container, uh, this is something that I added today for this, uh, this demo. Uh, QCTL server and with container. So what I what we do here is basically uh, straightforward between quotes. We basically make sure that we set up like C group nesting properly as an entry point, and then uh, we make sure to mount all the necessary uh, folders and, and paths in the right place so we don't get get any like overlay and overlay errors because this is K3s. Uh, K3S doesn't have all the automatic mechanisms that Docker has when you run Docker in Docker that it automatically like uh, uses like device mapper and other file systems to avoid doing overlay and overlay. So you have to basically hack around this yourself. Uh, I start the K3S server here, as you can see. This is the command that runs the whole thing. I'm basically disabling uh, traffic and metric server in this case, but of, of course this, this could be like um, customized. And then I'm taking the IP of the main interface, and this is required because, like, uh, generally, like 
Dagger services have multiple interfaces sometimes. So I'm basically picking the right IP here. And then basically all, all the other th all the other things are like basically straightforward. Uh, in order to get the config, I just get the config file. And then I with, for kubectl, I basically run the standard kubectl image and so on and so forth. So in order to see this in action, let me show you how you can actually run it. So you can do a dagger call. You can you need to set the name for your cluster. So I could say the name is going to be test. And then I can do server up. So this is going to start the Kubernetes cluster uh, in Dagger, right? So as you can see here, everything is starting. And now I should be able to do on another pane, uh, Dagger call, same server. So I could say test. And then I, I can call QCTL. And then I can say get pods. Give me all the pods of this cluster. So what this is going to do, this is basically going to run QCTL. It's going to fetch the config of the cluster that I created, uh, given this name. And then it's going to basically fetch all the pods in that cluster. So as you can see, uh, it fetched CoreDNS. It fetched uh, this local path. Uh, one other thing that I can also do with this is I could uh, uh, do QCT dagger call with the same name. I could call config. This is going to give me the config file of that cluster, you know, the um, the Kubernetes manifest. Uh, and then I, I need to tell, OK, is this um, config? Do you want this config to actually uh, run it locally in your machine or not, right? So if I do uh, local true, this should give me the uh, config. I think this is local. Let me see which are the arguments, because I, it's been a while since I last ran this. We, we can always use the help, which actually helps for this. And then, oh, I can do export, config, export, uh, and then path, config, .yaml. I think I should be able to set the, oh, because the local by default is, uh, yeah, the required flag local is not set. Uh, I think the, uh, the config is actually the one that receives the local. Let me check. Yeah, so this config receives a flag here, as you can say, local bool. So we should be able to say uh, local. Let's see. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully this works. So this worked. So now that I have the local config here, uh, the only difference with the local config is if, is if I print this file, this is going to basically map the port to localhost. And because we started, as you can see, we started the server with uh, Dagger server up, and it already uses the standard Kubernetes port, I should be able to say uh, kubectl, uh, I think there was a kubeconfig. Yeah, kubeconfig, config.yaml, get pods. Let's see if this works. And uh, this works. So as you can see, um, basically, I exported the, the Kubernetes config locally in my machine. And then I'm basically targeting this ephemeral cluster that I created for this particular pur purpose. And last but not least, um, I could also be doing like a dagger call. There's a new function that I added just today. And you can basically call uh, k9s. And as you know, uh, Dagger has this amazing feature where you could actually run terminal things in Dagger. So I could say k9s terminal. And this is basically going to run k9s within Dagger, actually accessing the cluster that I created before. So let's see if this, this works now. Yeah, so as you can see, k9s, and I can say, uh, give me the namespaces. And I have all the namespaces. So give me all the namespaces. And I can see the pods that I saw before here. Uh, yeah, so pretty awesome, pretty awesome. OK, so you have this running. This is a, like a nice experiment. I can play with Kubernetes and so on and so forth. But what users that come to the Dagger community generally like doing is using this on a bigger pipeline that basically starts a cluster, maybe installs a chem chart, and maybe, I don't know, does something else to basically validate that your Kubernetes things are working. A lot of people are using Argo CD and Kubernetes manifest to deploy things to production. Uh, so how does this look in a, like a real use case pipeline? So I have another project here that is called pipeline. I have a single function that is called Helm test. And as you can see, it doesn't receive anything. This is like only for um, like, uh, like showing purposes. But what I, did, I do in this function is I, I use the module 
that I just showed. So I installed the K3S module from Daggerverse, and I also installed the Helm module from Daggerverse. And like in 10 lines of code, I have like a programmatic pipeline that starts a Kubernetes cluster, installs, well, actually has Helm, configures everything, installs the Helm chart, and basically validates that the Helm chart actually works. Uh, so in this case, as I just mentioned, I start the cluster, I get the endpoint of the cluster, so I can then actually call it afterwards here. I can actually curl it. I install QCTL. Uh, I don't know why I'm installing QCTL because I'm not using it, but yeah, uh, I, I should be able to remove this. Um, I basically uh, set the, cube the correct cube, cube config so, so Helm can actually find it. I then I, I install the Nginx uh, chart, right? The Helm Nginx chart. I tell it to wait. So Helm has a feature where you can tell it to wait until this finishes. And then I basically run curl against the endpoint. So hopefully, this is going to give me like a full end to end start cluster, deploy Helm chart, and curl service, uh, everything working. So let's see if this works. So I'm basically going to do Dagger call because this returns the container. I'm going to do, I'm going to get the standard output. So this is going to take probably between 10 and 15 seconds because it needs to like start the cluster and then it needs to like uh, install Helm and uh, it also needs to wait for the um, Kubernetes for the Nginx pod, sorry, to be ready because this not only pulls the image but also like uh, you know it needs to wait for the Kubernetes reconciliation loop and all that. So if the demo gods are with me and I have the Argentinian mate uh, in this case to actually pray for it, let's see how it goes. I'm going to drink a mate while this finishes. Should be like a few seconds. Um, so we should be seeing like the output of the uh, like very popular Nginx uh, welcome page. Uh, so let's, oh, I know now I remember why I installed QCTL. QCTL, I'm going to show you in a minute, which is very cool. Uh, finish syncing. Uh, and if the demo gods are with me, oh, there you go. See? Uh, welcome to Nginx. So I, I have like a very simple 10 line uh, Kubernetes cluster set, set up on top of Dagger trademark. So uh, yeah, have fun with it, uh, use it. And the last thing that I want to show, which is like the basically another amazing UX feature of Dagger is that because I'm returning a container here, uh, I can, instead of like doing standard output, I could just do terminal. This is going to do the same thing as it did before, right? It's going to start the cluster, deploy the Helm chart, and all that, that, all the things that you know. The terminal is freezing here because it's waiting for the Helm chart to be ready. Uh, I'm going to take the chance to drink another mate, as I did before. And if this works, right, I'm going to, I should get the same output of the um, Nginx service being up. But now I'm going to have the addition that uh, I'm going to be left within the uh, Helm container, because I'm doing terminal on this container, which is the Helm container. And hopefully this works. And because I installed QCTL on that container, uh, now I should be able, yeah, now I'm, I'm in here, as you know, uh, as you can see, sorry. And because I installed QCTL, I should be able to do QCTL get pods dash A. And as you can see, my Nginx service is running, and I should be able to, to do, I can do QCTL, uh, get service, and I should be able to do curl this service. And that's it. I dare you to find a better tool with a better UX that actually helps you troubleshoot a cluster like this for CI purposes. Thank you.